Number 13. Assuming that no equilibria other than dissolution are involved, calculate the molar solubility of each of the following from its solubility product. And then we have PBI2. So we have to find the molar solubility of PBI2 from its solubility product. Just know that solubility product is a KSP. So I just went in the back of the textbook to find out what the KSP is of PBI2. But what is a KSP without a balanced equation? It's nothing. So we have to write out the balanced equation. And if you hear the downfall of rain <laughs> that's coming basically into my house, uh, just think of this as like a cozy, you know, warm, cuddly, rainy uh, video, you know, to study chemistry. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> okay, so PBI2. If we're dealing with a, um, if we're dealing with um, KSPs, remember that your starting ionic compound is always going to be a solid because these are always going to dissociate into its ions. So PBI2 will dissociate into its two ions. So the break has to be between the lead, the PB, and the I2, right? So I have PB plus I. But now remember, I just need those charges in the upper right-hand corner. You can crisscross to figure out what the uh, charges are, right? So this 2 crisscrosses up to PB, telling me that I had a plus 2 charge. I'm going to put a plus 2. And then you only had one PB, which crisscrosses up to the iodine, telling me that that was a negative one. That's like going back to basics uh, to figure out, you know, what ions make up an ionic compound. Since we have charges here, these are both aqueous. And now I just have to make sure that it's balanced. There's two iodines, so I do have to put a two in front of the iodine. There was only one lead, so one lead, so we're good to go. So we're going to hold this off to the side for now. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to use this equation to get the general KSP formula for PBI2. Now just know that, you know, KSP is this general formula right here. It's just the concentration of the products raised to their coefficients. So in this case, we will take KSP equals the concentration of the products. We don't care about the reactants because remember, no solids are allowed in any K equation. So we have PB, 2 plus, and then we have the I minus. But we just have to be careful that we always raise them to their coefficients. So that's when we just look at the big numbers in the front. There was only one PB and two iodines. So I could raise the PB to the first power, but that's the same number, right? But I do have to say that the I minus concentration is squared. Now let's plug in some numbers. Well, from the back of the textbook, the KSP is 1.4 times 10 to the negative eighth, right? But the thing is, is that I don't know what these concentrations are. Well, that's when we're going to start using variables. We love to use X, so let's just pick X, right? But technically, you could pick any letter. So I'm going to go back to my balanced equation, and I'm going to say, okay, I don't know what PB2 plus concentration is at equilibrium, so I'm just going to label it as X. But just make sure that you bring the coefficient along with it. Technically, this would be 1X, but 1 times X is just X. So I'll just leave it as x, but for the i minus, it's a 1 to 2 ratio. So if you label the PB2 plus as an x concentration, this would have to be 2 times more. So it would be 2x. And it makes sense because you just drop that 2 in front of your variable. So now I have x and 2x that are going to go into this equation, the PB2 plus is X, and the I minus is now 2X. So let's go for it. 1.4 times 10 to the negative eighth equals, we have the two parentheses, we got this one being squared, an X and a 2X. Let's break down what this is, right? Keep in mind that 2X squared is the same as just saying that you have two 2x's being multiplied by each other. So multiply the numbers first. 2 times 2 is 4. 
And now you're just dragging along two x values, one here and one here. So that's just a total of x squared. So I'm just going to erase the 2x squared and say that this is the same as 4x squared. Now we can say, okay, now I have a total of 3x's, 1x and 2x's. I'm dragging them along. I have 3x's. So I have 1.4 times 10 to the negative eighth equals 4x cubed. Now this is just going back to algebra. We're going to divide by 4 on both sides. Calculate time. And try not to round during the, you know, the middle uh, numbers here. So this would just be 3.5 times 10 to the negative ninth equals x cubed. Now, technically, we can do the cube root, right, on both sides, because that's what would cancel out uh, cubing. Just know that cube uh, rooting is the same thing as just raising it to the inverse of what you're, you know, raising it to. So this is really 3 over 1. So if I just raise it to the 1 third, they would cancel out. And I would do that to the, to the other side as well. I personally like to just do that into the calculator. Uh, but you could do the cube root. That's fine. And then we get x equals... Let's see, this number raised to the one third. And now I'll, I'll guess I'll pick two sig figs, 0 0.0015. I mean, maybe, maybe we could put it into scientific notation. So it'd be 1.5 times 10 to the negative three molarity. And now just know when you're calculating molar solubility, we're always just finding it out for the original solid. So they're looking for the uh, molar solubility of PBI2. But you can just use your ratios. Remember, KSP equations, you're always going to have one of your initial solid in the beginning. So the x value that you get, if you're doing it this way, is always going to be the molar solubility. So I have 1.5 times 10 to the negative 3 molarity of PBI2. And that is the final answer. Okay. I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, if you wouldn't mind, please press the subscribe button. That helps out the channel a lot and it wouldn't be where it's at without you guys. So thank you so much. And I look forward to helping you with future lessons. Okay. Bye-bye.